Hello everyone, my name is Ike, and today we are going to dive into the basics of how to use the replay mod. In this video, we are working with the assumption that you already have the replay mod installed, as well as FFmpeg, and Optifabric so that Optifine works. And if not, click the link in the top right of the video, and there should be a playlist with videos to help you get installed with all these things, and the fourth video should bring you right back to here all right guys we're finally in game here and when you pop in game obviously this is a finished replay uh you pop in game two things to to know is your escape key and the t key t allows you to move the mouse escape allows you to do this and also escape allows you to get to the menu now what we're looking at is the replay um camera path we also got our, our shortcut keys down here that we can toggle on and off. Um, and look at these yourself. You can roll the camera with L and J. You can reset the camera with K. Um, open keyframe presets. Don't do anything with that. Um, player overview allows you to make the player invisible or not. Just hit escape to get out of that. And the event marker places this event uh right here and you can kind of edit some of this stuff here but it's really not super important unless you're going to use it for um you know marking things when you're going through your replay to begin with so my first thing i would do is turn up the speed to eight start your uh timeline here at zero this is your irl timeline here we got 31 minutes of footage and just watch through all of the footage once you uh, start it up and hit play, hit escape and move yourself away so you can see everything. And just watch all the way through the footage and see what you need to see. Decide the kind of movement you might want. You're just going to do a circle or you know whatever you planned out. It helps you to kind of understand from a third person standpoint what the video is going to look like. And then you can make some plans from there. Um, but anyways, you can also slow it way down to this speed. Basically nothing. And uh, yeah, so anyways, once you do that, the best thing to do is figure out where the video starts, which I think it's just somewhere around two minutes here. And at two minutes, you can add a time keyframe here, which is right here. And if you right click on my time keyframe, it'll actually take you to where I started the video. It's so at 206. And you can also right click these position keyframes and they'll take you to the position. All basically at zero time, but you can also right click the time keyframes and they move, they actually move the time in the RL counter here and uh, help you edit the video by placing you at the correct times that you've already marked. Now when you start, you're not going to have any of this. You're basically going to need to know where the build is, mark your keyframe. And what I like to do, just as a general preference, is I like to come to the end of the video, figure out how long I want it to be, and I determined this one to be a minute and 30, so I clicked my time keyframe here and added my 30 minute keyframe there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear all my keyframes by clicking that. Everything's gone. Basically we have a fresh template. So we know the video starts somewhere around two minutes so I'm going to go ahead and click there. I'm going to hit T. Or I'm going to hit escape and back out a little bit. I'm going to hit T. We can see what the player is. Uh, we're going to hit play button there and then we're going to hit our keyframe and then I say let's move out 10 seconds and moving out 10 seconds from our here we're going to add another time keyframe and what that's going to do basically is allow the camera and everything to load in for the 10 seconds or so here and what you can do is just basically add your position keyframes on there 
Now, this 10 seconds is basically the time you're going to end up cutting off of the video when you put it in your editor. It's going to be allowing all the frames and everything to generate once it moves in because sometimes when you got a, like a fast replay or you cover a lot of areas, sometimes all the chunks don't necessarily load in. So that by adding this habit in, it'll allow you to have a lot smoother, cleaner time lapses. So we're going to want this to be about a minute and a half, like I said, because of the length of it. So go ahead and click on, um, you know, about 30 minutes here at the end. Hit play. You've already got your time marked at 130. You can speed the guy up a little bit so that he gets done a little quicker. You see him kind of come to rest and you're looking at the video. You can click and the character's looking at the build. You can kind of click time keyframe just like I did there. So still moving. I had a little time, but we're able to cut a little bit of it off. If you want to, you can add another one that likes, say, 10 seconds later. That gives you a little junction at the end, the same we had at the beginning, to cut the frame and look at the build a little longer if you want to. So I would probably end looking at the build right here. And so go ahead and add the same position right there. So. Now you have a minute time lapse, and if we go ahead and just start it and hit play, basically it's just going to zoom in from position to position. It's going to move from this path to this path over that amount of time. Very smooth, very clean. And sometimes a very simple time lapse could look just like this. You're only going to get the one flat dimension of the build, but the majority of this build actually is, you could get away with it. But uh, most people want to see all sides, so we're going to show you how to do that too. So uh, we're about, say, a minute 40, minute and a half, so about 45 seconds. And I'm going to go ahead and put our second time frame or our position frame and around the back here so we're not going to worry about too much detail you can learn detail more as you go along as you can see all that's going to do is loop over the top and come back so what we need to do is put some poise positions as i would call it in between so that we can control how it looks so about 25 seconds we're going to be here which is going to cause that circle around then all these mid mediocre like not mediocre but all these mid-range positions you can do um, can do from the paused position you're just adding paths on the camera between two timelines so basically we're going to click here and we'll have a very nice, smooth, circled time lapse build. You could also go the other direction if you like. Um, of course, this being a very simple, we're just going to spin around the thing one time kind of time lapse. We're not going to capture every single increment of detail but we can get a lot of it still and uh, most people will appreciate this way better than just a camera account or a first person time lapse anyways so also a tip from Puerto Rosino uh, who does a lot of time lapses is to uh, make them real slow in inside the replay editor here render them and speed them up in your your uh, actual video editor that way you're able to do smoother and more detailed time lapses and there we go we're going to come in here and the video is basically going to end at a minute 30 
And then we're going to have an extra 10 seconds here to just kind of look at the build if we want to. It's just going to rock between the positions. That's, that's a pretty nice way to transition from ending the ending to the next clip, in my opinion. So, anyways, a couple things here. If you want to like go to this particular um, position, you can right click and it will take you there. If you want to go to this particular time, you can right click on the timestamp, it'll take you there. Uh, it looks like it's at zero, but if you can, if you look at the IRL timeline there, it's actually at 211. Same thing here if we right click on this one. Um, and I think this is a more appropriate way to speed up than clicking on here once you've got it set. As you can see, it moves you right to the time a lot quicker. Uh, but anyways, guys, um, the only other thing that I can show you is how to um, maybe pause the video. And so let's, uh, let's go ahead and start our clock here about partway through. Okay, so let's pause that. We're going to add a time frame right there and our position. Okay. Then, say we want to pause it and pause it here. So between those two times, nothing is moving. So what we can do is actually add another position. Now this is not intended to look nice, by the way. Uh, it's just intended to to show the purpose. Um, so we're going to. Coming up on it, got our position. Speed up. Now the character pauses, as you can see my type name tag there, I don't move at all. And once we get to the next position and that time, it will begin to move again. Now that's something you can use to actually show some really great detail into the video. Uh, and something that's going to take a lot of practice. But uh, anyways, guys, this is kind of like the basic, basic, basics. <laughs> I could waffle on for another three hours here about how to do this. Um, but basically get in here and just use the replay mod as much as possible. And trial and error and learn a lot of things. And uh, before long, you'll be a way better time-lapse guy than me. Um, but yeah, anyways, this has been Ike bringing the ideas and tutorials to help you survive and thrive in Minecraft. Until next time, guys, happy Minecraft, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.